Math is a wonderful thing. Math is a really cool thing. All right, for the next topic, we are going to discuss inverse variation. So values of the two variables change in an opposite manner. As one value increases, the other decreases. Inverse variation has of the form y equals k divided by x. So the product of the two variables remain constant. It means that from this equation, y equals k over x. When you solve for k, so we have y equals kx. When you solve for k, you multiply both sides by x. So x here will cancel out, and you will have k equals xy. So the product of x and y will always be equal to k. If x increases, then y decreases. If x decreases, y increases. So let's take this example. So we have here the time for the trip varies inversely as a speed travel. So we have here two variables. We have the time for the trip and the speed traveled. Now, imagine if you are in point A, location A, and you are going to location B. And let's say this is your car. If you're going to speed up, meaning you're going to increase your speed, the time needed to reach your destination from point A to point B is less. The time. Okay? Now, what if, what if you are going to take your time, slows down, what do you think is going to happen to the time um, for your trip? So as you drive, you'll just take your time, very, very cautious, very, very careful. Okay, so if you're going to do that, um, decrease your speed, how long do you think you're going to reach your destination? You need more time, you will have more time driving to reach your destination. So this is an example of an inverse variation. So if one variable increases, the other variable decreases. So let's take the equation of the inverse variation. We said that the equation is y equals k. k is the constant of variation. When you solve for k, as what we showed earlier, it will be equal to the product of your x and y. Again, our constant of variation here should not be equal to zero. What is the graph of inverse variation? The graph is not a straight line. So this will be the graph of your inverse variation. Um, note that this line, this curve here, will never cross the x-axis, neither the y-axis. Okay, same thing with this graph. It will never cross or touch the y-axis. Same thing with the x-axis. So how do you write an equation for inverse variation problems? So if you have z varies inversely as p, so your varies inversely, just write that as equal to k divided by something. Now, this variable here is before varies inversely. Write this variable before the equal sign. And then the variable after varies inversely will be your denominator. All right? So z equals k divided by p. Now, if you are going to solve for your constant of variation, just multiply your variables z times p. Example number two, the number of hours it takes for a block of ice to melt varies inversely as a temperature. So varies inversely, that's equal to K 
divided by something. The variable before varies inversely is h. That's the number of hours. So write h before the equal sign. And the variable after the varies inversely, which is a temperature, that will be your denominator. It should make sense because during summer, temperatures very, very high. It takes only a few minutes to uh, melt a given block of ice. Whereas during winter, the temperature is very, very low. You need more time to melt a given block of ice. Now, how do we solve for K? Again, just multiply your two variables, H times T. Third example, in kickboxing, it is found that the force needed to break a board varies inversely with the length of the board. So, varies inversely, that's your equal to K divided by something. The variable before this is force, so write F before the equal sign. The variable after varies inversely is your length or L. Write L as your denominator. So your constant of variation will be K equals F times L. So if we have a table, how do we know if we have inverse variation? Just to have a review, for direct variation, we need to divide your y by x. And whenever we have the same value of k, that will be a direct variation. For inverse variation, remember that the equation for inverse variation is y equals k divided by x. And we said that k is the product of your two variables, x times y. So this will be, this is what we are going to do. We are going to multiply your your x and y and if we have the same k then that table represents inverse variation so let's try to um, check the first table so again find the k multiply x by y so 1 times 16 so your k here is 16 2 times 8 is also 16 4 times 4 is also 16 now don't assume that the entire table will be 16 we have to check um, each pair because sometimes the first three might be correct but the last one is wrong so you know just be careful and check so here we multiply 8 by 2 it is also equal to 16 since we have the same K then this will be an inverse variation and what will be the equation it will be y equals K in this case 16 divided by your X or you can write x times y equals 16. Okay, for table number two, go ahead and pause the video and try to identify if this one is an inverse variation. <coughs> How do we write inverse variation equation? In a formula, z varies inversely as p. Now, if z is 200, when p equals 4, find the equation for the inverse variation. Let's start with the formula. You can either use, um, so I have various inversely here, so that's equal to k divided by, so z is before various inversely, so write z before the equal sign. p is after various inversely, that will be your denominator. You can use this, or if you want, you can use k equals k equals z times p. Okay, let's replace the variable. So in this case, I will use k equals z times p. This equation is better because we will be able to find our k right away. z is 200. Your p is equal to 4. So that's your k. And solve for the k, the constant of variation. In this case, k will be equal to 800. And then we will just go back to the formula and then replace the value of our k. So when you write your formula or your equation, uh, you have to use both of this. So for the first one, z equals k, which is 800 divided by p. Or we can say 800 equals z 
times p. All right, let's solve this question over here. In a formula, again, z varies inversely as p. If z is 200 when p equals 4, find z when p is equal to 10. So again, you have to write your um, equation first. So z varies inversely as p, or we can use k equals z times p. Replacing your z and p to find your constant of variation, z is 200, your p is 4, and we got 800 earlier. Once you have we can either use this equation or this equation. So let's use uh, both of them. So z equals k divided by p, or we can use k, which is 800, divided by, sorry, equals z times p. In this problem, it's better for us to use this equation because we would like to find the z when p equals 10. So what will be the value of z if p equals 10? So we just need to replace our p here by 10. And our z is equal to 80. Of course, you can also use this if you want. Um, just replace your, your p by 10. But you will have one extra step. You need to divide both sides by 10. So when you divide both sides by 10, you will get 800 divided by 10. It's also equal to 80. All right, example number two. The number of hours it takes for a block of ice to melt varies inversely as a temperature. If it takes two hours for a square inch of ice to melt at 65 degrees, find the constant of proportionality. Alright, so we need to find the k, just the constant of proportionality. Now let's start with the formula or with the equation. Various inversely that equals k divided by something. The variable before this is h, so write h before the equal sign. And t is the variable after various inversely, then that will be your denominator. Or we can use k equals h times t. I replace the variable. For this problem, it's better for us to use k equals h times t. In the first place, we are trying to look for the value of our k. So I'm going to use this equation over here. So k h is 2 hours. And the temperature is 65 degrees. Solve for k. So your k here is equal to 2 times 65. That's equal to 130. Now let's write the equation for inverse variation. Well, actually, for this one, we can just skip step number 4 because we are actually done. We already found the constant of proportionality, which is equal to 130. All right, for this question, pause the video and solve the problem. All right, next question. We have here a situation, and we would like to identify if this relationship is an inverse variation. If it is, write an equation of the relation. A painting contractor determined the average amount of time needed to paint a house. When three painters are used, it takes 15 hours to paint the exterior of a house. When six painters are used, it takes seven and a half hours to paint the exterior of a house. So let's try to check if this one is an inverse variation. I will again create a table. Again, our X will be the time or the hours. So for 15 hours, we need three painters for six painters um, they'll be able to paint the exterior exterior of a house in 7.5 hours so let's check 
the value of our k, we need to multiply x and y. Now, x here is the number of hours, so this would be your h. y is actually our p, or the number of painters. So our k is equal to x, which is h, times y, in this case, the number of painters. Okay, let's multiply 15 and 3 to find our k. So 15 times 3 is 45. Next, 7.5 times 6. When you multiply 7.5 by 6, we are going to get 45 also. Since we have the same values of k, we are going to say that we have here an inverse variation. So let's write the equation. So we have k equals h times p, or we can have h equals k divided by p, or we can have p equals k divided by p equals k divided by h. Note that these two equations came from this. If we divide by p to both sides, we are going to get h equals k divided by p. Now, if we divide by h to both sides, k and k will cancel out, we are going to get p equals k divided by h. So we just need to replace our k, which is equal to 45, and we are done. So one of the equations, or if, if we replace k here by 45, you will have 45 equals h times p. We can also have h equals k, but k is 45, divided by p. Or I can have p equals... 45 divided by h. So we can have this, or this, or this for the equation for this relation. Math is a wonderful thing. Math is a really cool thing.